I want to tell you how, about how this project came uh, into existence. I do work on a much smaller scale. In fact, the pieces that uh, the curators uh, of Rice Gallery, uh, Kim Davenport and Joshua Fisher saw in New York at the Museum of Arts and Design were um, six inches by eight inches uh, by seven inches deep tunnel books. And those are the, the scale, that's the scale that I usually work at. And um, when, when they met with me and they asked me if I would be interested in making something on a much larger scale, I immediately said yes because I thought that would be just a very uh, unique uh, opportunity and challenge and I just really wanted to give it a try. But when I first came to uh, Houston in January and I actually stood in front of this wall and I saw how vast this space was, I really got a little bit intimidated <laughs> by it. In this space, things can range just like in, in nature, in real life, things can range from half inch or smaller to like 12 foot or, or, or larger. And so to create that range of, of elements, we, we used two techniques. One was um, the big, the big um, layers, which are made of gator board, which is a four mica foam, four mica sandwich. That was, uh, those were hand cut here at a uh, rice gallery with uh, power tools. It's very difficult to cut. It's impossible to cut by hand, in fact, because it chips. Uh, so you need a lot of expertise to really cut those as intricately as I designed them in a small scale. And then the little elements that you see in there are all laser cut. Uh, what's interesting about that is that I usually hand cut, I always before hand cut my, my paper cutouts and it's the first time that I used the laser cutter for, for my work and we had to use the laser cutter because there's hundreds of little objects and elements that go in and it would have been impossible to do that by hand. So I, ha I laser cut these in New York um, at Parsons where I work, it's a design school. And, um, and ship them down here. And so we, we came together and we put all of the different elements which were fabricated in different parts, uh, uh, six people for six days to put it together. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the inspiration and the theme for the, for the project. It's uh, titled Sometimes in My Dreams I Fly. And it comes together from two places. One is that I was thinking uh, well, how site specificity will work in this space. We are in Houston and um, how that ties in with my own interests and past. I grew up in Romania in the 1970s and 80s and during that time it was uh, during the Cold War and we were not able to travel um, outside of the country and even sometimes in times inside of the country was difficult. And uh, most of the travel took place in our imagination. We traveled through books, through reading books. We went to different exotic places. And we also traveled in dreams and in imagination and in, in stories, in storytelling. So one of the things that was really um, fascinating for me as a child was the space race and how uh, even though there were no more places to discover on Earth because everything was mapped out and figured out and found, there was this excitement during the 70s of uh, people discovering new galaxies and new universes and walking on the moon. This uh, led me to collect space stamps and other things related to space and I was very um, inspired by the imagery, the bold and propagandistic imagery that uh, characterized that era of men landing on moon and men doing all kinds of uh, fun things in, um, without gravity and so on. And so putting these two things together, the fact that I couldn't travel uh, except in my imagination and with, with Houston's involvement in the Apollo program, I came upon the Apollo 13 mission which uh, never actually made it to the moon. They were turned back and their uh, mission was considered, uh, was, uh, was uh, called a successful failure because even though they never made it to the moon, they were able to overcome their technical difficulty and come back. And the famous phrase, uh, Houston, we have a problem, was uttered during this um, expedition. So the fact that these people were also not able to go and um, they, they had to return and so only in their imagination they were able to really set foot on the moon 
And uh, combined with my interest for space travel, I came up with this imaginary lunar uh, world that if I would go, if I would be able to travel, this is what I think I will find. And what are these things that I would find? They are landscapes with um, seemingly natural and seemingly man-made uh, objects in them, machines and, and um, spaceships and water towers. And there are these creatures that inhabit this landscape. And what I'm trying to do here is not necessarily to tell a linear story with a one, one possible um, course and one possible ending, but what I'm trying to do is create a set uh, with characters, with inhabitants of this set, and put it out there for people, for viewers, to be able to make up their own stories. I don't want to tell you uh, what these creatures are doing. Are they coming? Are they visitors? Or do they live there? Are they uh, working? Or are they um, having leisurely time? Are they threatened? Are they running away? Or they are trying to get into places? Are they building something together? Or is there chaos and confusion? It's really up to each one of you, based on your dreams and your experiences and your interests, to make up your own stories about these creatures some of whom have names, actually. Uh, if you also look at the cutouts on the windows, some of these creatures appear there, such as on, on this window over here is Carrot Man, the large guy who's running around. On the window uh, on the other side of the gallery is Brain Man. Uh, there's small leaf wing diver in the middle with a space uh, jellyfish. And if you guys open your brochures in the middle of the brochure, you will see all the different uh, creatures with all their different names and uh, little short snippets of who these, who these um, creatures are. And the way I worked with them is com by combining human anthropomorphic elements with either uh, plant elements or animal elements and populate the space with them.